Imagine if books were so expensive that only billionaires and elite people could afford it. It's hard to think of a world with books being so rare. But actually, books have been like that for most of its history. Books were so difficult to produce that only elite scholars could afford it. One of the major changes in the production of books was brought by a German goldsmith who invented the printing press, a machine that turned books from a luxury of the elites to a necessity of the common people. But exactly how did that happen? The writing system was developed long before books existed, even before anything like paper existed. Ancient civilizations used to write on stones, trees, metal sheets, and bones. One of the earliest portable writing mediums was the clay tablets, which became very popular in ancient Near East throughout the Bronze Age. A reed stylus was used to write on these flattened clay tablets. It could be reused by soaking in water. Sometimes the clay tablets were fried in fire, intentionally or accidentally, which made them survive much longer. The earliest paper-like writing medium was used by the ancient Egyptians. Papyrus, a thick paper-like material made from the pith of the papyrus plant. Papyrus was rolled up into a scroll which is kind of an early form of a book. This is a section of the Egyptian Book of the Dead, written on a papyrus scroll. Scrolls were highly regarded at that time. Scrolls made of parchments were used by the Israelites. Parchment is another writing medium made from animal skin. Scrolls remain the most popular form of a book until the codex was introduced during the Roman period. A codex is the first formation that modern people would recognize as a book. Stack of sheets bound together at one edge. A codex is much like the modern book. Legend has it that Julius Caesar may have been the first Roman who folded scrolls to form a codex for the first time but it is not sure if he really was the inventor of codex. Historically, Christians were among the earliest people to make widespread use of codices. Several Christian papyrus codices date from the 2nd century. In the Western culture, codices gradually replaced scrolls during the 4th century. Although scrolls were still used, it wasn't the most widely used anymore, and it was reasonable to use a codex instead of a scroll. A codex took less space. It could be easily handled and it was awkward to use a scroll when the reader wished to read contents from the other edge of the scroll. It was much easier to navigate any content in a codex. Modern books are not much different from codices, the only differences being the use of paper and printing press. Paper was invented more than 2000 years ago in China. Early Chinese paper was made from the bark fibers taken from the mulberry tree. The fibers were pounded and broken into small pieces. Then it was teed in water and dried on a mat to form a sheet of paper. Later they started mixing hemp rags and fishing nets with the pulp to make higher quality paper. China kept the process a secret for a long time. But in 751 AD, the Arab Caliphate army defeated the Chinese Tang army in the Battle of Talas. Among the prisoners of the battle, there were two Chinese paper makers from whom the Islamic world learned to make paper. Widespread use of paper started in the Middle East from the 8th century. Paper mills were built all over the Middle East. Islamic papers were made using leftover fibers from hemp and cloth rags. In the 13th century, paper was introduced to medieval Europe through the city of Baghdad. In the next two centuries, paper mills were built throughout Europe. Soon, paper started replacing other writing mediums. Remember the title of this video? It was about a German goldsmith who invented the printing press. Who is this German goldsmith and why is the printing press so important? Before the discovery of printing machines, almost all books were copied by hand, means a person had to copy the whole book by themselves. That's why books were comparatively rare and expensive. A professional copyist was called a scribe. Different kinds of scribes were needed to finish a single book. Normal copies used to copy basic productions. A calligrapher was needed for fine book production. The copies would usually leave blank places for an illuminator to paint the illustrations. Finally, a corrector would compare the copied book with the original manuscript for the final corrections. Copying a book was a really hard job, and it took a long, long time. 
In the 14th century, the rise of universities in Europe increased the demand for books. A new, faster and easier method of printing books was needed more than ever. And for the new method, we have to look at China once again. Woodblock printing is the earliest form of printing that was applied on paper. It was invented in China before 220 AD and became widely used throughout East Asia including Korea and Japan. Initially, it was used for printing on clothes. Later in the 7th century, it started being used for printing on paper. Piece of wood was cut precisely into the shape of the characters or paintings. The woodcut was first pressed on colors and then on the paper to print the whole page at a time. This is the front piece of the earliest dated printed book known to us called the Diamond Sutra, which dates back to 868 AD. Movable type printing also started in China. In movable type, separate character blocks were placed in a frame to form the preferred composition. Both woodblock and movable type printing didn't reach Europe until the late 14th to 15th century when paper became widely available. But the real revolution of printing started in 1440 when Johannes Gutenberg, a German goldsmith, invented the printing press. This is a Gutenberg printing press. He developed movable under table that helped to speed up the printing process. A new technique of making the metal letters from hand mold was invented by him to create the type pieces used in the movable type. As a goldsmith, he used his knowledge about metals to create the letters from a lead-based alloy. It proved to be so perfect for the printing process that it is still used in modern printing presses. Water-based ink didn't stick well to metals, so he used an oil-based ink which was more durable. At first, the ink was spread on the type. Then the paper was pressed on the ink type to transfer the ink to the paper using a screw attached to a metal pallet. A small rotating handle was used to do this. Here in the sketch, you can see two men working on a printing press. One is removing the printed paper and the other is spreading ink on the metal text. This duo could print up to 3600 pages per day, while the traditional hand print could only print 40 pages. This made printing books cheaper, easier and faster. By the end of the 15th century, printing presses were already in use in over 200 cities in Europe and produced several million copies. Books became cheaper and widely available. It started the era of mass communication. Ideas could be circulated beyond borders which started reforming the structure of society permanently. Book production wasn't controlled by religion or government anymore which is known as the democratization of knowledge. This allowed the society to question the authorities. The printing press has gone through several improvements since then, but the printing method remained fundamentally the same until the 20th century. Modern day books are printed using offset lithography. The offset printing uses cylinders instead of flat metal presses. In this method, the image information is coated on a thin aluminum plate using laser technology. The image area is then covered with ink and the non-image area with water. Oil-based ink doesn't mix with the water, so it remains in the image area. The ink is transferred to a rubber cylinder called the blanket and then onto a paper which passes through the blanket and the impression cylinder. Digital printing is also being used recently only for small book productions. The process of making books has evolved a lot with the discovery of new technologies but the overall appearance of a book didn't change much since the codex was introduced. Well, it depends on what exactly you consider a book. Physical books can still be categorized as codices, but the electronic books, or in short, e-books, are a totally different concept. No paper or printing machine is needed to make an e-book, just a capable digital device and sometimes an internet connection. Ebooks can be easily distributed all over the world through the internet, and they are also cheaper. But still, many people prefer physical books. Maybe there is something special about holding a book with your hands while reading. What do you think? Are physical books better than ebooks? Write down your thoughts in the comments. And if you like to discover the stories behind great inventions in history, then subscribe to my channel, Procetus.